Welcome to our Oracular Tech Talk. My name is Pritham Jaipuriyar, and I'm the head of digital growth strategy at Diancis. I have been helping my enterprise clients, both in the fortune list and the small and medium businesses segment in their digital transformation journey. Diancis is a software company providing IT management and IT consulting services to global clients in manufacturing, retail, healthcare, supply chain, logistics, real estate investment trust, and financial institutions. Diancis is headquartered in Dallas, Texas, and operates out of the US, Canada, Mexico, and India. So let's get started with Oracular Tech Talk. I have with me my esteemed guest, John Ray from Tricentis. John, welcome to Oraculars and a brief introduction about yourself, John. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, hello everyone, my name is John Ray. Um, over the last 20 years, I've been in what you might call QA adjacent roles. I've been in operations side and the development side of the house. And so that gives me kind of a unique perspective on where I am now in the QA field. And for about the last nine years, I've worked specifically with our channel partners, incorporating our solutions into their uh, go-to-market motion as kind of a technical advisor. And currently, I have an additional role with our Alliance Architecture team, where I lead our channel-led POV motion, so assisting our partners like yourself when you all are leading the charge with our products. Thank you, John. So John has been helping us in our testing automation implementations and deployments with customers. Specifically, we as a company focus on the Oracle platform and this webinar today is going to talk about Oracle. So John, uh, help us understand uh, about testing automation and how, what is Tricentis, uh, what went behind formation of Tricentis? Yeah, absolutely. So Tricentis was actually born out of the kind of frustrations of our founders who had a software testing consultancy and just realized that it was in getting increasingly difficult to keep up with the pace of change when we were doing everything in kind of this manual way. So the core product Tosca uh, started all the way back in, in 2000 and it has grown into a automation product that allows us to automate over 180 different technologies um, across multiple stacks, on-premise, cloud, SaaS apps, custom applications, mobile applications, mainframes, all of these types of things. We started kind of in that world as just a software test automation company, but over the years we have merged with other companies such as QA Symphony to bring in the QTest product, we've acquired other technologies, and so when you fast forward to today, Tricinus has expanded our portfolio to encompass things like data testing, service virtualization, mobile, performance uh, testing, all of these things are now there, and now we have 3,000 plus clients, we have hundreds of thousands of engineers who know and use our products and we have global presence across the United States, Europe, and Asia Pacific. That's fantastic, John. Why do customers choose Tricentis for testing Oracle? That's actually a really interesting question because normally it's just, why do we want to get off manual testing to begin with, right? So we, we have this whole pace of change things that we talk about. But Oracle specific applications are, are fun because um, there is a hard delineation in the early, in the Oracle space between the on-premise versions of things and the cloud versions of things. And there's this huge push to get to cloud, both from Oracle itself and, and from the clients. Um, but there's also a lot of situations where people want to stay, certain things they want to keep on-premise, which is kind of unique in this space. And so what you need is not only a tool that can test your SaaS-based applications, you need a tool that can set, test your on-premise based applications. And then almost no one just has an Oracle environment. Almost everyone has some other type of integration or application that plugs into that environment that requires the ability to test in order to test an end-to-end -end business flow. Normally, when you think about software test automation, you're thinking about coverage and does this button work and, you know, did this page go to the correct place and that sort of thing. Uh, but when you start talking about the way that Tricinus does testing, we like to test the process itself. And so if you need to go from um, different applications from a mainframe, from a mobile application into Oracle, out of Oracle, 
um, into your on-premise applications, into your cloud applications, right? You need to have a tool set that can stick with you throughout the entire thing. So not only do we have kind of the model-based way of doing things as opposed to writing a bunch of code to test these things, we can do things in a more pragmatic kind of way. Uh, we can test all of the things that you need to test and you don't have to switch between different frameworks. And so Oracle testing in general is, is a very cool place to be because of all of the different integrations that uh, it requires. And more where it is a scriptless testing, right? You don't have to code it. You, have, you create a test model and that model can be reused again and again. Uh, and yeah. as I understand the Tricentis uh, platform offers your uh, Q-Test, which is test management uh, mm -hmm. software, and the Tasca, which is the automated uh, testing software, which creates the models. And then you have something for performance testing. Why is Tasca so popular and how does that support Oracle? So the popularity of Tosca really is, as you mentioned, this idea of, of model-based testing versus script-based testing. So traditionally what you would do is you'd sit down with a bunch of folks who know how to write whatever code it's gonna be, JavaScript or what have you, uh, and they're gonna build a code base to test your code base or to test your Oracle applications. And so we wanted to look at it a little bit differently. We wanted to create something that was a little bit more um, business friendly, if you will. And so what we do is we, we scan a screen and um, we create a model of that screen, a representation of that screen. And so in the tool, what you do is you take these individual models and you just kind of plug them in, right? And create your test case mm -hmm. that way. And so what that um, enables is, is that you can get people who would never have been involved in your testing practice because they didn't know how to write code now those folks can be involved because once the models are built, anybody who knows the business process and what data needs to be plugged in can go build a test case. And so when it comes to things like Oracle, what you have are there are not a lot of people who write a bunch of code, but there are a lot of people who understand the business process and her, who are in the tools every day. And so when you talk about Oracle, you're talking about being able to expand your testing pool. And you're talking about being able to do this in a, in a very um, easy kind of way because I don't have to write a bunch of code. Now, the most important part of this, especially in the Oracle space, has to do with the speed of the Oracle SaaS releases. Oracle Cloud, in the old days, an Oracle release took was what, like every four years or something like that, we'd get a release and then we'd have to go do our regression testing. So you used to get two years of regression testing on things. And now you get two weeks of regression testing on things because Oracle is pushing an update um, quarterly now. And so not only have we gotten to a point where automation is required for Oracle, it's not no longer a nice to have, like you have to have it now to keep up with the pace of change. Um, but you also need to be able to expand your testing pool so that you don't get a bottleneck in uh, how many engineers can actually do this. And so that's really the power of Tosca is to enable organizations to achieve that velocity. Oh, that's very true. I think Oracle releases uh, every quarter, the schedule releases uh, for the SaaS product. So uh, the automated testing, uh, regression testing uh, becomes much easier when you use uh, the Tosca platform. Do you have any examples of success stories, John, that you can share with us? Uh, what be typical benefits do customers receive out of uh, this testing platform? Absolutely. So we have the typical kind of marketing things to look at where we talk about, um, you know, being able to achieve 80 to 90 percent automation rates and these sorts of things. Um, but when you look at what success is here, I'll give you one of our clients was, uh, they were doing the migration from on-premise Oracle products to SaaS products. And their biggest thing was keeping up with these quarterly changes. And so when we got them, they were at a place where their automation rates were very low. They were in disparate um, tool sets and multiple tool sets that they needed to have in order to do the little automation that they could do. And so they didn't have anything to test their data. And when you bring in the Tricena suite, not only are you talking about being able to test all of these things, right? Performance test your on-premise products, 
um, make sure the data gets migrated correctly and it's validated across your ETL. You can get automation rates in excess of 85% that allow you to spend less time in the testing phase, right? And more time in the actual getting the benefit out of the product phase. And, and so what this enabled for them actually is really interesting because the testing part, once we automated the testing part and the maintenance factor came down and the automation rates went up, they were able to keep up with this pace of change. When, when they were able to keep up with the pace of change, what they realized was, hey, look, we now have all of these really awesome resources who aren't spending weeks and weeks doing testing. And so now they got to take these resources and they got to apply them towards how do we use these new features that are coming out to better benefit our organization. And so not only did they see this increased testing velocity that we like to talk about, but their overall business velocity went up significantly simply because they were now able to focus on the things that really mattered instead of spending weeks and weeks doing regression testing. And I think that's one of the overlooked things in the testing world is that we focus on things like automation rates and coverages and all of these kind of KPIs that are important. But the point of all of these things is to reduce the toil from the testing part of things and allow us to focus our um, our really smart people on doing really smart things for the company so that we can keep things moving forward. Now, uh, we see that a lot of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques being applied. And there are a lot of use cases in almost any sphere of the business that you select. Is automation testing taking a cue from that? Is there anything that Tricentis is doing to make use of AI uh, in automation testing? Uh, Absolutely. What are the challenges that you see and what do you think uh, we are trying to resolve? Sure. So we actually started in this um, AI space uh, several years ago before the, the birth of, of ChatGBT and whatnot. So we've had this product for some time called Vision AI. Uh, Vision mm -hmm. AI is what you would classify as uh, narrow AI now or machine learning. And the idea was that uh, for applications like a Citrix based application, right? The application itself is not actually on your screen. It's just a picture of the application. Traditional image based controls are inherently unstable simply because they rely on the pixels themselves. You're, you're not really looking at it, you're just matching up pixels to say whether or not this thing matches. And so what Vision AI lets us do is it allows us to look at a screen and it allows us to say, this is a button, this is a link, this is a drop down. You know, these are all of these types of things that we can build in our model. And so when we think about AI, um, we said with Vision AI, well, we, we, we have this particular problem and we need to solve this problem. And um, this is going to allow us to do that. And so when we started to look at other places that we could use AI in our products, we really kind of divide things into three categories. So you have your narrow AI section. This is things that are kind of machine learning based. They do one thing really, really well. So these are things that like Vision AI, like um, like being able to do risk assessments and, and to look at, um, look at change impact analysis in your environment um, and determine which tests actually need to be run based on a particular change. Things like what we do in our mobile platform where we're getting trend data and calling out, um, calling out things to the engineers before they even have to go investigate it, such as the speed of their application on a certain platform in a certain <laughs> set of conditions, right? So that's kind of that first level. Level in the, in the second level, you're looking at more of the kind of LLM supported ways of doing things. And so, it, for instance, in Tosca, we said, okay, what are the things that are difficult for people or that slow adoption of the product? And one of the things we found was log files. Going through the logs at the end of a test run can be kind of onerous. And so we uh, built a, what we call a copilot and the copilots are uh, in Tosca specifically, you can point it at an execution log and it will go through the log for you and it will summarize what's going on inside of this test case. So you no longer have to spend a bunch of time going through logs to figure things out. We've also implemented um, the ability to ask questions, if you will, of your project. Things like how many modules were built in the last month? 
um, how many modules that were executed last week had self-healing applied to them. And these sorts of things allow you to get very intimate about your project and really understand what's going on inside of your project. So those were the things we started with. We started with these ideas of let's build something that targets specific problems. I think the holy grail for everybody though is to be able to generate things. And so in QTest, for instance, we've started working, uh, and as a matter of fact, it should be, it was in closed beta, but it should be GA here pretty soon. The ability to provide a requirement set and have QTest automatically generate test cases for you. So this massively accelerates how fast you can do these things. A lot of folks in the Oracle space, when they're doing the migration, right, from on-premise to cloud, one of the biggest stumbling blocks is they don't actually have all the test cases documented for this stuff. Right. They have a bunch of requirements, but they don't necessarily have all the test cases built. And so this can massively accelerate how fast that happens for your organization. In some of our other products, we're doing things like having JavaScript help bots right, that, that help you figure out how to do things. In Tosco, we're uh, enabling you to ask it questions about best practices for how do I do certain types of, of things. And that's so that's our second level. The third level is the autonomous stuff, the, the truly autonomous stuff. And we're working now internally to build out um, the ability to literally point Tosca at an application and provide it some data for what it's supposed to put in and have it automatically be able to not only build the test cases for you, but build and run the automation for you. And I think this is where we really feel like we're going is the ability to point Tosca at an application, no matter what it is, um, and have it be able to figure out what it's supposed to do. And so that's kind of the, the holy grail, I guess, if you will, of test automation. But we want to make sure that we keep our focus on our products and enhancing our products. When it comes to working with partners like yourself, who are you know also doing these things, we want to be able to work with you to incorporate what you're doing and what we're doing and bring those things together so that we can improve the overall experience for our clients. Wonderful. So you have great plans for the future in adopting AI. What is the difference that you will highlight in testing any software application versus an enterprise application like ours. Yeah, packaged applications in general are, are kind of fun. And, and the main thing there is that you don't actually control the infrastructure that a lot of these SaaS products are deployed to. You don't control the release timelines that these products are, are um, updated on. Uh, you don't control what might break, right, when something new comes out. And so when you talk about the enterprise as a whole, what you're really talking about is complexity. There's a lot of complexity inside of enterprises in general, because while we're focused on Oracle, it's not just about Oracle, right? There are a zillion other uh, products and platforms that people use in their day-to-day -day life that have to integrate and work with all of these uh, products. And so when you talk about testing packaged applications and doing this for the enterprise, what you're really talking about is we're not testing the software anymore. We're Right? We're relying on Oracle to have tested their software ahead of time. What we have to make sure is, is that our, all of our customizations, all of our business processes continue to function and that we're able to try to use some of these new features that come out day-to-day -day lives, right? And so that's the biggest difference between traditional software testing where it's like, okay, my developer built something, so let me performance test that thing. Let me make sure that... Uh, the API contracts are fulfilled. Let me make sure that the button is green instead of orange or something like that. Um, now we're saying, let me make sure that I can fulfill a sales order or onboard someone new into my organization. Things that really matter for the business in a way that is the button green might not. And so when you do that, the the typical thing is to say, okay, well, this this product tests for this and this tests for this, and now I'm going to have somebody sit down and go through all of this stuff. And as we talked about earlier, the speed of these releases, just you can't do that. You're going to get so far behind or you're going to end up opting out of certain cool things. You might not even know that a new feature could help you because you won't have time to test it. And so you won't have any trust built up in it. 
And so really being able to have a, a single platform, a single product that allows you to test across all of the complexity of your environment is just incredibly, incredibly helpful. It really accelerates how fast you can do these tests. And as we were talking about earlier, really gets you to a place where you can now start to say, okay, I don't have to spend all this time doing regression testing. What else could I be doing to enhance the business? Well said. One last question, which will be a lighter question. Who should we blame for a software bug, despite all the automation and AI and everything? Who is to be blamed? Who should we blame bug? for a bug? So there, there's kind of two ways to look at this. And one is, is that most of the time, a uh, the bugs escaping, things getting into production have to do with leadership. And, and I don't mean that your leaders are bad. What I mean is creating a culture of quality, um, a culture that says we would rather push this a week late than push something that is going to have maybe a bug in it. It's, and it's all about incentivizing your people in that manner. We place a, a lot of pressure on developers to push features. Um, and because we do that, we don't always give them the context that they need in order to build something that isn't going to cause technical debt or other problems down the road. So th that's kind of one way to, th that's one side of it. You have to look at it from the um, place of its leadership's responsibility to build a culture and incentivize people for quality versus for just pushing features out. The other piece of this is, is that bugs happen, right? It's, it's, I don't know of any place I've ever worked where there's never been a bug that has gotten out into production. And so the other piece of this is it's on the companies themselves to own when these types of things happen. And when you do that, what you're doing is you're building confidence in your organization and for your clients specifically. And your clients, um, if they can trust you, if they can trust that you have a culture of quality and they can trust that when something does happen that you're gonna be there for them to help them through these sorts of things, then that just creates an environment where you can achieve velocity. You can take risks in things and try out new stuff. But without those two things uh, working together, you know, a bug getting out can end your company in some cases if you're, if you're not really careful. So I think that's the way that we should look at bugs getting out into the wild. Very good. So if you guys want to reduce your bugs, if you want to improve the software quality, use our testing platform, the Tricentis Task Automation Testing Platform. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. John Ray and Pritam Jepri are signing off for Auriculars. Thank you so much.